Is hell real? I'm going to be reading a testimony here from a lady who experienced a dimension of outer darkness. The Bible addresses that there is an outer darkness, obviously a dimension of hell, and uh, so we're not off base when we talk about outer darkness. What it all consists of, God has not explained in the Bible much about it, but uh, you'll hear a little bit about what she has to share from her personal experience. This was written by a lady, her first name is Haiti, H-A-Y-D-E-E. -E. I was baptized by the Jehovah Witnesses in 1970 in Ponce, Puerto Rico, in a full-blown cultish, quote-unquote, religion, which believed in God the Father as the only true God. I was taught by them to believe that Jesus Christ was not God, but a God created by God the Father. I was taught to believe there is no life after death, much less that there was a conscious spirit that would leave the body when I died. I was taught not to believe in any kind of miracle healing, nor believe that God would communicate with people through visions or dreams if he wanted to. I was also taught that all kinds of healing Miracles and visions were the work of the devil. I was very loyal to these teachings, and nobody could convince me differently by the age of 26. Then God saw fit to shake my world of the deception I was taught by the Jehovah's Witnesses and had chosen to believe. On September 12, 1973, I was ready to have a C-section. In the operating room, they applied an orange liquid all over my belly, and they started injecting me with an, with an anesthetic. I felt a strange sensation. My body got stiff, but my mind stayed awake. I realized they were going to cut my abdomen, and I was not asleep. I tried to move and scream to let them know I was conscious, but all efforts were in vain. I started feeling a terrible pain when they began cutting my abdomen. All of a sudden, I heard an audible voice say, Look what is going to happen to you. In that instant, I was pulled out of my body and found myself at the ceiling of the room. From there, I could see how my baby was being taken out of my womb. Felt very sad, and I said to myself, this is it. Everything is finished for me on the earth. I was so anxious to see that baby, and I couldn't even hold it in my arms. What can I do, I'm thinking to myself. My children forget, will forget all about me. I then started going up. I was able to realize I didn't have a solid body. I was some kind of energy force moving at a high speed like in a circular motion. However, I knew I was me and all my memories were with me. I also knew I had left the earth. I went on going up until I found myself in a pitch black place. I was so puzzled. I started asking questions. Is this the universe? Where am I? Where am I going to? Am I going to stay here forever? All of a sudden, I started feeling something very strange. The only word I can use for this is agony or torment. I was feeling a need for a body. I started feeling a kind of anguish. I wanted to get out of there and I wanted my body back. I couldn't bear the torment. I remembered the audible voice I heard before coming out of my body. Look what's going to happen to you. 
I started screaming, please, don't let this happen to me. I accept I won't ever go to the earth again. I accept I will never see my children again, but I can't accept that I will be here forever. No, please, don't let this happen to me. I then heard a group of voices saying at the same time, this is for you to believe. I exclaimed, I only believe in the Almighty God. The torment I was feeling stopped. I then started to come down at a high rate of speed. I found myself back to the ceiling of the hospital room. This time my body was lying on a stretcher and I saw a nurse tapping my face and saying, Haiti, wake up. I could clearly see her while I was moving down closer to my body. Then I was softly dropped inside my body. The nurse was still tapping my face and calling my name. I opened my eyes and there she was right in front of my face. I looked at her eyes while I was thinking. I wish you knew where I just came from. I couldn't put the experience out of my mind and I was very concerned about people in the world and where they might spend eternity. I began to realize I was deceived by what I had been taught to believe. There actually exists a conscious spirit that comes out of the body. People don't know what can happen to them. They need to know about this. They need to be warned. I was discharged from the hospital and went back home thinking about everyone in the world who didn't know they were going to come out of their bodies, totally conscious when they died and that they would leave their dead bodies behind. Furthermore, that they may go to the black darkness like I did. I felt like I was about to lose my mind. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to warn everybody about it so they could escape for their lives. Before my C-section, I was suffering from kidney infection. They were infected with a bacterium called, and I'm going to read this, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it because I'm terrible at medical terms, spelled A-E-R-U-G-I-N-O-S-A. The bacteria caused my right kidney to clog and it stopped working. I had to go through a very delicate surgery to remove all the damaged part of the kidney, leaving me with only a small piece of it and a plastic surgery done to the ureter all the way down to the bladder. The plastic surgery to the ureter had to be done because I was short and narrow by a birth defect plus it was clogged with the kidney infection. Everything appeared to be fine except that since my left kidney was also infected with the bacteria, I had to be under medication during the full length of my pregnancy to keep the bacteria from spreading. I was about seven days from being discharged from the hospital and my left kidney was hurting a lot. One morning I got up from my bed feeling very strange. I felt my face weird like it was tight so I went to the mirror and noticed my mouth was t twisted to the side. My left eye couldn't wink nor close. I became hysterical and rushed to the hospital, leaving my kids with my husband at home. The doctor said I had a facial paralysis and prescribed for me a series of injections, then sent me for, uh, a facial, sent me for facial therapy. I had all my shots and started my facial therapy, which was the application of electrical mini shocks to my face in order to bring the nerve movement back. A family doctor visited me and said that it looked as if the facial nerve had died. Then he said, Haiti, you will have to sadly accept to look like that forever. I was only 26 years old. It was like the end of the world for me. Near the end of one of my facial therapy series, I began experiencing, experiencing some kind of strange dizziness. Little by little, I began entering into a different dimension. 
I lost my memory completely. I didn't know if I had fed the kids and the baby. I saw what appeared to be the walls of the house falling on me. When I was outside the house, it was as though the trees and the clouds were falling on me. Everything was distorted. It was horrible. I cried constantly, asking Jehovah to at least let me know if I had fed my children and especially the baby. My skin turned yellowish in color and my family and the neighbors, they all told me later, were expecting me to die. I became weaker and weaker each day. My husband used to leave the house in the morning while I was alone with my kids all day until evening when he returned home. I had no one to help me with my kids. One evening I felt incredibly weak. I knew I was gonna die. My kids went to sleep and I laid down next to my five-year-old quote, man. He had helped me so much during my ordeal. If I've got to die, I wanted to die close to him. I wrapped my arm around him and I started to call my God's name. I said, Jehovah, if I'm to die, I want to do it calling your name. I didn't mention Jesus Christ because I didn't believe in him yet. Even though I had the out-of-body experience, learning I was a spirit inside a body, visiting blackness and agony, I had not yet believed in Yeshua, Jesus, as my Savior. I got up in the morning even weaker. My breathing was so heavy and my legs were so weak that I realized death had to be so close. I walked away from the bedroom and I fell on the floor. I had an indescribably weird coldness inside my bones and my breathing was getting difficult. There was no doubt in my mind I was dying. I said softly, Jehovah, give me courage to die and to leave my little kids. They don't have anyone to take care of them. All of a sudden, I saw a lady standing in front of me. I recognized the lady was a Pentecostal neighbor. She used to live a few houses away from mine. I used to turn my way when I saw her in the streets. I didn't want to hear her talk to me about Jesus. While I was observing her, I heard an audible voice saying, Go to her. I answered back to the voice and replied, I won't humiliate myself before a Pentecostal. The voice spoke to me again saying, Go to her. You have an opportunity. You're going to die. When a voice said that, I realized it was true since I was feeling death so close. I decided to go to the lady's house, but I was not planning to ask for healing since I didn't believe in miracles. I called my five-year-old son and asked him to help me go to the lady's house. He held my hand, very willing to help. I told him that if I fell down on our way to the lady's house, to call someone for help to take me to the hospital, which he had agreed to do. We arrived at the lady's house and entered the porch. When the lady saw me, she opened her eyes widely and exclaimed, My Lord, what are you doing here in such condition, in such a condition, girl? I said, Mrs. Anna, I'm coming here to ask you to pray to God so he will give me courage to die. I will die today and my kids are going to be with no one to take good care of them. She said to me boldly, let me tell you something. The same Jesus Christ of yesterday is the same Jesus Christ today. He has not changed and he's going to heal you so you can believe in him. I did not want to hear those words. She said, go to your house and pray. I will pray here for you and you will be healed. She gave me a tiny bottle with oil and told me to put the oil everywhere I was in pain. Quote, because the Bible says to bring the ill ones and anoint them with oil and pray. The book of James chapter 5 verse 14 reads, is any among you sick? 
Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the Lord will heal the sick. Then I left the house. But I was kind of annoyed by her words. I got home, and as soon as I entered the door, I felt prompted to kneel on the floor. I took the oil and put it all over my forehead. It was an ordeal to feel myself lost in a strange dimension of some sort. I put it over my left kidney. I then felt inside to start praying. I looked up to heaven and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of your Holy Spirit, heal me that I will say whatever you do for me. The next instant, I felt what seemed like electricity entering the soles of my feet, moving up through my whole body up to my head and where it stayed for a while. Then the current left my body. I got up and looked outside the window. The trees were in their right place. I exclaimed, the, the world is again as it used to be. The pain from my left kidney has disappeared. I ran to the mirror. My face was back to normal and my mind was clear. I started running around the house screaming. It's true that Jesus Christ still heals. It's true that Jesus Christ still heals. I felt so good. I cleaned the house, cooked, and fed my little children. When my husband came home that evening, I casually asked him if he wanted dinner. He stared at me as if seeing a ghost and asked, What has happened? To you, I intentionally ask, what do you mean? <laughs> he exclaimed, what happened that has made you so well? I said, you want to know what happened? Jesus Christ healed me. My husband exclaimed, we have to go to the church. <laughs> I thought to myself, to the church? Uh, what church is he talking about? I hope he's not talking about that Pentecostal church. <laughs> After a while, the Pentecostal lady came to visit me, asking how I was. I told her, Jesus Christ healed me. She said, you have to go to church and testify about this miracle. Let me know when you want to do so, and I'll take you to church. With hesitation and reluctance, I answered, I will see. As soon as she left, I walked to the bedroom. Looking up to heaven, I said, You have taught me that I have a spirit. You have taught me that Jesus Christ still heals. Show me now where the truth is, and I promise to serve you. Right away, I heard a voice. This time, the voice was inside my head. I heard a voice say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father but by me. I am the door. By me. If any man enters in, he shall be saved. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. All of a sudden, my mind opened up with great understanding. I said, you say no one comes into the Father? You don't say no one goes into the Father. That means you, Jesus, and the Father are one. Here God broke another one of the connecting links in my brainwashed chain of lies I had been taught. I said, you say you are the light, and if I follow you, I won't walk in darkness? That's not what my religion taught me. They said if I left them... I would walk in darkness. You say you are the truth, so the truth is not a religion? You are the truth? Well, I know for sure that Pentecostals preach about you, so I will visit the Pentecostal church. All of the neighborhood saw the miracle God did in me. I recovered my normal skin color. I went to the doctor, and my new urine analysis was normal. The doctor told me, Haiti, this is the first time in two years that your urine test comes out to be negative. I got the chance to testify to the doctor who agreed. It was a miracle. 
On my way out of the doctor's office, the secretary confessed to me that they were thinking I was going to die. Later on, I had a sonogram done, and they found both of my kidneys were of normal size and were in sound health. To God be the glory. I decided then to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord and started visiting the Pentecostal Church. I continued to go to the Pentecostal Church, dedicating my life to God. One time, I was worshiping the Lord in the church when all of a sudden my chest was hit and felt like it split. Immediately, I felt my body was being electrified and an indescribable joy overcame my whole being. As I continued to praise the Lord in this ecstatic joy, I found coming out of my mouth a language I had never spoken before. I didn't know what was going on, but I was wrapped in sublime joy. I eventually began to calm down. Hey, <laughs> you would have been excited too if you could have experienced what I experienced. And I asked the neighbor later, Sister Ann, I asked the neighbor lady, Sister Anna, the one God used to pray for my healing, what has happened to me? She answered with a huge smile. You've just been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I knelt on the floor to thank God for such a precious, amazing experience, feeling so overjoyed with the power and blessing God had just imparted to me. I realized I risked sounding a bit quote, spooky, and a little, quote, strange by sharing what I'm about to share next. I could easily not share it, but for some reason I feel God wants me to share it, so I'm going to. Maybe someone needs to hear about it. A few days later, after my precious Holy Spirit baptism encounter at church, I went to sleep one night. I woke up sometime in the night and got up out of bed and took a few steps forward. While walking toward the door, I looked at my bed, and I saw my husband laying on it, but to my surprise, my body was also there. I looked at myself. I had a body this time. I stretched my arms forward and looked at this new body. I realized I had died. I looked at my children's bedroom, and I felt sad to leave them. I thought, now, when my children wake up, they will see I'm dead. They will bury that body, and they will forget all about me. They don't have anybody to take good care of them, poor babies. I then knelt on the floor and started praying. Please, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, return me to my body. My children need me. I felt a force lifting me slowly from the floor, and I was positioned on top of my body on the bed, and started to come down slowly until I f uh, fell inside it. I tried to open my eyes right away, but they didn't open. I tried to move, but the body was rigid like a wall. All efforts to move were in vain. I got desperate, and I began to pray, Please, Lord, my children need me. There's no one to take care of them properly. Bring me back to life. I started feeling the force of life through my entire body, and the beating of my heart. I then tried to open my eyes, and this time they opened. Then I moved my fingers to check, and they moved. I then jumped out of the bed overwhelmed with amazement. I've been given the opportunity to share this testimony in different churches, uh, and many lives have been touched, and many have given their hearts to our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this testimony. To God be all the glory. Well, uh, I just want to briefly say that uh, if you're not a student of the New Testament Bible, in the book of Matthew, verse, uh, no, Matthew chapter 8, verse 12, it reads, uh, But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, it reads, these are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest, to whom the gloom of darkness is reserved forever. Well, praise God, what a story. Well, my friend, 
Let's end this out by me exhorting you to make sure you don't end up in outer darkness. Whatever that might fully mean. It's not a place that God wants any of us to visit. At least stay there. If we're there, uh, if we see it in vision form or literally experience it, probably the only reason. Well, the two reasons would be, first of all, to warn us. This is where you're going to go if you don't get right with me. You know, aim it with truth. Uh, secondly, um, uh, tell everybody that they don't want to be there either when they die. So, so that's probably the twofold purpose of the, her writing this testimony. Don't go there. God doesn't want anybody to go there. God doesn't want anybody to suffer after this life is over. He wants them to be right with him and to experience joy forevermore once our heart stops beating. That's God's will for each of us. But we have to play a huge part in all of that. We have to, if, if you're deceived like Haiti was deceived about who Jesus Christ was and is and forever will be, he's one of the three persons of the eternal Godhead. That's clear in the New Testament Bible. And in the first, uh, in the book of John, chapter 1, it clearly communicates that Jesus was and is and fully God, always was and always will be. Um, as you read the whole council of the New Testament, um, it also does say there in the first chapter of the book of John that the Word who was God, who made all things, uh, of course, with the cooperation of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, that's to be assumed, came down and lived this life as a mere man. Why? So he could be tempted to sin like anybody else will ever be or has ever been tempted to sin, yet was able to say no to sin. So he was the only man who has never sinned. And because of that, God the Father found him as the only human sacrifice acceptable to the Father to pay ransom payment for all of our sins. And then when he went to the cross, taking our punishment, um, giving to us God's righteousness, free of charge, came with salvation as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 tells us about it. We then, he then, after he died, then resurrected and went back to heaven to go back to where he always was with a glorified body um, that we're going to get one day as believers in Christ Jesus. Um, there he is. And so he did tell us he sent the Holy Spirit to come and uh, help us in this Christian walk, to know truth, to be empowered, to say no to besetting temptations to sin, um, to know what's true and what's not true. Uh, the Holy Spirit does many, many things, but to receive the Holy Spirit, we must ask Jesus Christ to be our Savior and Lord and mean business with letting him be Lord. We can call him Lord of our lives, but it's our actions that we demonstrate to him just how much we want to let him be our Lord. Well, I won't say a whole lot more about that right now, my friend. Make the wisest decision you will ever make if you haven't made it yet, and that is yes to Jesus, yes to Jesus, and accept his free gift of salvation, forgiveness for all of your sins, past, present, and future so that you can be right with him immediately, so that when your heart stops and you don't know when it's going to stop, you can have assurance that your sins will not be held against you, that the righteousness of God that is given to each of us who say yes to Jesus, we got free of charge as well as forgiveness of our sins, makes us totally acceptable to God, totally acceptable, and we are free to be with God for all eternity. No more pain, no more suffering. Wisest decision we could ever make. Don't let anything keep you from making that decision and meaning business after you make that decision, my friend. I want to see you in heaven.